Just miles mm. uh, down the road from the scene of protests in Ferguson, we're hearing a lot about Florissant. Mm. Just down Florissant is the grave of Dred Scott, who is buried in the Calvary Cemetery on West Florissant Avenue. Born a slave in Virginia, Dred Scott sued in a St. Louis court for his freedom. The case went to the Supreme Court, resulting in a landmark Supreme Court decision that's called the worst ever. In 1857, the court ruled African Americans were not citizens of the United States and therefore had no rights to sue in federal courts. The court described blacks as, quote, beings of an inferior order and altogether unfit to associate with the white race, either in social or political relations, and so far inferior that they had no rights which the white man was bound to respect, unquote. Again, the Dred Scott decision considered the worst decision in the history of the Supreme Court in the slave state of Missouri. Uh, the seven to two decision, the chief justice was a slave owner himself. In fact, a number of the Supreme Court justices were slave owners themselves. To talk more about the significance of this case today, we're joined by Kimberly Crenshaw, professor of law at UCLA and Columbia University, founder of the African American Policy Forum. Um, Kimberly, thank you for joining us. Uh, professor Crenshaw, talk about the significance of Dred Scott's body just lying down the road on Florissant, the road we've heard so much about as these protests continue and escalate. Well, it really couldn't be more symbolic. As you point out, Dred Scott is widely regarded as being one of the worst cases ever. Um, and there are two ways in which we might see its relevance in this particular moment. One, when the Supreme Court was trying to decide whether African Americans could be citizens, what they considered was the way African Americans were treated. Um, they weren't necessarily looking at formal law. In a lot of ways, free blacks had more rights than white women did. But the overall idea was that they could be enslavable. The overall idea is that they weren't seen um, as having the same social worth uh, as white Americans and could be enslaved for their own good. So the very possibility of their enslavability meant that, at least as far as the founders were concerned, they were going to be forever and permanently a stateless people. And that would have likely been the case had uh, the, the case not led to a civil war. But the second thing that is actually equally resident now is that the Supreme Court was trying to resolve a slavery issue once and for all by reinforcing slavery, by saying that if you are a white person and you own a slave, you can do and travel and move anywhere you want with that slave because the Constitution protects you. So they were trying to end it in a way that's quite similar to the way the Supreme Court today is trying to end all agitation um, around civil rights, trying to end all agitation about integrating police departments. One of the reasons why the Ferguson Police Department looks the way it does is because the Supreme Court has rolled back on anti-discrimination law, rolled back on affirmative action, rolled back on voting rights, and has used the Constitution, the 14th Amendment, in precisely the same way that the Dred Scott case tried to do, to end the whole thing. And that's why Dred Scott is still relevant now, even though it's formally overturned. Mm. And your concerns, Professor Crenshaw, as you look at what's happening in Ferguson right now? Well, I, I have concerns in that it seems as though um, the only thing that really ripped Dred Scott away from history was massive uprising. One was a civil war, and then the next thing that happened was a civil rights movement. What would we think would happen if there was a civil rights movement now um, with the weapons of mass destruction that local officers have? If we could just imagine what would have happened if Bull Connor um, had— uh, a armored personnel carrier. We might not have had a civil rights movement, and if we had it, it would have been short-lived. This is why we need the president to be far more aggressive, not just in trying to make both sides happy. No president in a civil rights crisis can make both sides happy. Eisenhower, Nixon, Kennedy, Johnson, they all had to step in very powerfully and say that these are matters that have to be taken up at the federal level, at the legal level. There are specific things that need to be done, and those don't involve 
involved just asking uh, boys to, to, to act better or for there to be mentors. There's only so much you can do holding up your hands um, against structural and long-term racial problems that Ferguson has clearly shown. This is the end of post-racialism. The question is, is it the beginning of something else? Reverend Stansel, you were recently speaking at a church in Missouri that was founded by freed slaves, that was celebrating its something like 150th anniversary. Uh, this issue of Dred Scott being buried down the road on Florissant. Well, I, I think the professor framed that <clears throat> quite well. Um, the, Dred, the, the Dred Scott decision was a, was a bad decision. But it, it, it would have been a bad decision that would have, thank God, that it didn't go unchallenged. And as the professor said, it caused an uprising. And many times that's what moved the public debate uh, was the uprising. And I think this uprising that we're seeing in Ferguson is what's going to move the public debate, uh, that we can begin to openly discuss the race, we can begin to openly discuss the lack of diversity, uh, not only in Ferguson, but when we look around at other municipalities throughout the state of Missouri, we see the same thing occurring. And, and, and as the professor said, it's because there has been a cutback. There has been an attack on civil rights. There, there has been an attack on affirmative action. And now we're seeing now we're beginning to experience, I don't even say seeing, experience the results of it. And so I think the Dred Scott decision is very important. I think it um, uh, shows great parallel that Dred Scott is buried right down the street from where this uprising is occurring. We're going to have to leave it there. I want to thank Reverend Clinton Stansel, um, uh, the senior pastor at the Wayman AME Church in St. Louis, um, uh, superintendent, former superintendent Art McCoy of uh, the Ferguson Florissant School District, Professor Kimberly Crenshaw, professor of law at UCLA and Columbia University, and Stephen Hawkins, executive director of Amnesty International USA. That does it for our broadcast.